of film, and this is going to be at the North Dade Regional Library. Tell us what's going to happen at your workshop. Well, this is a free workshop in regards to the multi-billion dollar industry of film production, and I definitely want to try to open something up for the community in which if they want to be a part of this film production industry, this will give them something to attend. But you're going to have a number of people speaking about the different aspects of the film industry. Definitely. This Wednesday, we're going to feature Miss Ruth Paul from the Screen Actors Guild. She's going to actually talk directly to actors and people who may have kids that want to get into acting or film and let them know about being SAG eligible and their SAG in these films that we have in Florida. And those that don't want to act, you also have some information for them. Oh, yes, most definitely. For filmmakers, we definitely want to show them certain ways to brand their, their products and actually make money with film. This is a free workshop, and this is going to be at the North Dade Regional Library. What's the address? The address is 2455 Northwest 183rd Street in Miami Gardens. This is going to take place this Wednesday, and you start at what time in the afternoon? We're going to start the workshop at 4.30, and it's going to run to 6.30 with a little networking with other people that's in the industry, maybe musicians, writers, anybody that wanted to be a part of this film aspect will, will be welcome to come out. They can also find out more information from the North Dade Regional Library at 305-625-6424. Free workshop called So You Want to Make a Film, and with us this morning, freelance filmmaker, Mr. Darren Saunders, and I wish you well this Wednesday. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, I want to thank the library for actually allowing me to put on uh, this type of program. Uh, I think we all have the same direction. And right now, it's all about really trying to take a part of a multi-billion dollar industry. And film, being on time is very important because the time is money. That call time says, be here. Hey, you need to be here. We, we look at each other and we all probably have more urban projects. Everything that we're gonna write about is more of our experience or something that we know about and we may just write it just on that. But sometimes Hollywood is just not picking up those urban stories. I also start attaching name actors on. You know, and the way I was able to get them was because I started branding myself so well on the social network. Now when I send it, hey, listen, I would like to put you in this particular project, would you like it? Well, first thing that they ask is the sad project. And I was like, you talking about this is a sad project. Man, it's a great story, man. Get on in my car, I'm thinking, let's do it. They can't because of the sad union actors, they have to go through the union, which protects them and also protects everyone else. And I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Ruby right now, and she's going to give you an aspect of sad actors. But the reason that um, Baron wanted me to come is because he uh, has signed our agreements before. Mm -hmm. And he said, everybody wants to know, are you a SAG project? With the SAG agreements, you can use named actors without spending thousands and thousands of dollars, especially under these contracts. They were made for the low-budget community. Aaron, you're thinking about, well, y'all want to do this movie, it's a blockbuster. We have to think about who's going to be in your film that's going to push that film to the next level. Who can give your film a little notoriety. And then start seeking out that person. And you, if they read the script, they may just sign on. But that's the benefits of signing with SAG. Now, what does it mean to the producer? It just means having your paperwork in order. If you're a company, you can shoot as an individual. But it's really better that if you're going to use a SAG member, I'm speaking only when you're using union members, that you have um, an LLC, a, a DBA, a sole proprietorship, um, something that will um, protect you as a filmmaker from getting sued if, for instance, uh, Clifton is on the set and he's walking and all of a sudden the court is out there, he trips, he busts his jaw or something. He can't, you know, go to this other movie. He's got two weeks down the line. He's going to sue you. What I do actually is involved with, you know, films have, a, they want to make sure that everybody gets to see the film, right, when they get out. So there's a lot of money very often that goes into making a film, and then you need to help with brands. And what I do is I re bring in corporate brands like Coca-Cola, uh, General Motors, you know how when you watch television and you see these big uh, Hummers and uh, you watch CSI Miami? Did you guys see that? Okay. So my, what my company in LA when I was there and now I'm here in Miami, we, used, we put the Hummer in 
CSI Miami. Yes, those are the kinds of things that I work with, is putting brands together with um, television shows and films. But as a filmmaker, you want to uh, very often get those brands involved because they will actually pay you to put their products in the film. So that helps you create a budget, and if you can get, if you have a budget of 50,000, let's say, what's important for a corporate brand like the Coca-Cola to be part of the film is to make sure that you have distribution, which means that your film is gonna be seen somewhere, right? Because if Darren just makes a film and no one can see it, except your, you and you know your friends, it doesn't do much, does it? So you have to make sure you have distribution, and then you also need to have some known names in the films, like a Tom Cruise. Maybe not that high level if you're a beginning filmmaker. You might want to get somebody that's known here in Miami, um, but that might have been popular. He may be an old, might be an older actor or something that was popular once upon a time, and you can get them for a lot less money to join your production, then that's important to getting money from corporate brands to help support your production. I just think as a writer right now, you just want to really think out of the box when you're trying to get um, people to notice your, your, your writing. What, what I found very interesting and very helpful was that, you know, when you do a feature film, it takes a lot. It takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of money, it takes a lot of effort. And I, I really wanted to try to cheat it a little bit and try to find out what really interests people, you know? And then what I decided to do, I said, you know what? I hear the story about Twilight, I hear the story about Harry Potter, and all those different things were like, you know, fantasy and sci-fi and all those different things. I tried to actually make myself get into that genre so I can have something on the table. Learn it and master that camera. You know, a lot of people are gonna come out and they're gonna always have this camera. Next week, uh, the cream of the crop, I think right now, is the red camera. Everybody talked about the red. I got a chance to use that red and this amazing camera. But to be honest with you, after I finish with it, the editing is still a little challenge. So I'm trying to actually go with what I have and make sure that what I'm putting out is still of DVD quality. So when you see it, you enjoy a great